Fibre optics have revolutionised communication, but they could also help create a new generation of powerful particle accelerators that are much smaller than the likes of the 27 km long Large Hadron Collider. These so-called wakefield accelerators use laser pulses to create an energy wake on which particles effectively surf at very high speeds. And it's fibre lasers in particular that scientists think are needed to make the technology practical. The problem at the moment is that the lasers that we produce, these very large laser pulses that uh, create the wake, can only work at a repetition rate of about once per second. Now, what we'd really like to make, a, if you wanted to make a particle accelerator, is to have a repetition rate much, much higher than that. And that's very hard to do using conventional laser technology, the laser technology that we've got in this lab. Uh, fibre lasers can work at very, very much higher average powers, and they can provide this very high repetition rate. Um, and essentially the problem is getting rid of the heat that's created and because the fibres are long and thin they have a large surface area and they can get rid of all the heat. Um, uh, in addition to that, fibre lasers can be very very efficient. So if you want to make a real system that has to actually, um, it's using electricity to make the electron beam, then you really don't want the laser to be only producing a fraction of a percent efficiency. We'd like the laser process to be maybe 30 percent efficient and you can do that with fibre lasers. The engineering challenges in building a system like this are enormous because what we need to do is make up for the fact that the fibre laser can't have a very high intensity pulse travelling down through it. Now, what you need to do then is to make many fibre lasers and add together the, all of their pulses at the very end. And so, by many in this case, we mean thousands of fibre lasers, all running at very high power individually, and then the output of those thousands of lasers is brought together to form a single pulse at the very end. And so, how you do that, how you'd put the fibre lasers together, how you'd add the pulses together, is a, is a very complex engineering problem, but it looks like one that you can solve. Scientists at Southampton University's Optoelectronics Research Centre are using their expertise in fibre making to address this challenge. They're hoping to produce 1,000 identical fibres as a way of building a laser that operates fast enough to make Wakefield accelerators useful for scientific research. Uh, making fibres is a two-stage process and what you do first of all is create the shape you need in the glass which is a big, uh, thick tube of glass with a thinner rod running down the middle, of a made of a slightly different glass. Um, we make those things by depositing glass on the inside of a tube with a flame. And what we end up with is a tube which is maybe a couple of centimetres across and a metre long, which has the same structure as the final thin optical fibre that we want. Once we've got that tube, which is called a preform, then we take that and we put it into one of these machines up here, which is called a draw tower and we stretch it. We heat it up until the glass is just about melting and then we stretch it into a very thin filament. And uh, the process works in the same way that you might have um, seaside rock working. The structure that we've made in the fibre is retained, um, just scaled down to a lot smaller size. And then we draw the fibre onto a roll um, after, it's, uh, after it's solidified. And that's what makes the very long lengths of fibre that you get on um, used for telecommunications and things like that. So for the ICANN laser, what we want is a very high average power. We need a huge amount of power out of these fibres. And that means, first of all, getting the right dopant inside the fibre that actually makes the laser. So what we use is a terbium, and the terbium is actually in the core of the fibre. And we have to get that terbium uh, well dispersed and in the right place in the core. So that's the first challenge. That's true for all high power lasers. But for the ICANN project in particular, what we'll need is thousands of identical lasers. So one of the big engineering challenges is making the fibre in such a way that we can produce a thousand lasers lengths of maybe a metre long, which are all have exactly the same properties in terms of the, the laser gain and things like this.